Hey everyone, so this is a kind of surprise stream in a sense because um, I haven't really streamed in a while because I've been pretty busy with my MBA. And so for a lot of the previous kind of DCF videos, I had to just kind of previously record and wasn't able to stream. But, um, you know, Netflix is actually the first company where I built a model for and I streamed. So it's been a while, I think maybe almost a year. And uh, let me go through today's agenda really quickly. You know, we're going to be going over a Netflix situation overview. And I wanted to provide a little bit more color on the qualitative aspect of Netflix's business more than usual in my previous streams. Then I want to talk a little bit about Wall Street Prep. I want to give you some really brief reminders and disclaimers, and then we'll go into the DCF. But first of all, for the Netflix situation overview, let's just really quickly look at the stock price. So... You can see from year to date, pretty terrible performance. Uh, it's down 68%. And this was what kind of piqued my interest a little bit and made me want to see what a DCF would uh, kind of, what kind of value a DCF would spit out because um, it's very vastly out underperformed the S&P 500. And if you look even back further, um, you see that it was doing really well and then, you know, really declined. And I'll kind of go over into reasons as to why that is. Uh, one of which is you see these like huge drops here. They're after uh, quarterly earnings. And it's because Netflix has not been kind of doing super hot in terms of uh, subscriber growth and things we'll discuss fairly quick, fairly soon. And um, one thing that I just wanted to kind of show you guys and recommend is that if you ever do see these like really big vertical uh, moves down or up, one thing you can always do is kind of check on bamsec.com, look up the company and look at when they last reported earnings. So April 21st, 2022, right? And this is April 21st, 2022. This is, that pretty much explains this big drop. It was the quarterly earnings report. So just wanted to show you guys that. And going into the situation overview. So let me, oops. So there are a few things I want to cover. Uh, one thing, as I kind of discussed a little bit, subscriber growth fell a lot last quarter, which is what caused the stock to plummet. And so in this upcoming quarter, which is going to be quarterly report, which is going to be after um, today's market close, uh, the expectations from what I read from equity research reports is that subscribers are expected to fall again. But next quarter, in the third quarter, it, there's an expectation that it'll grow and ultimately kind of net even. So that's something really important to keep an eye out for. Obviously, Netflix has been a super high growth company um, that's been really hyped over the past decade or so, but it's really kind of fallen off and um, it's having issues with like competition and whatnot. Um, and then the other thing is uh, there is has been a lot of benefit from Stranger Things, which I haven't actually watched myself, but season four was the second most watched watched a show on Netflix after 28 days of release, only a second to Squid Games. And they have more of that coming. So that could be a potential catalyst. Um, Netflix is also going to crack down on password sharing, which has been kind of all over news, all over the news. And they're trying to increase their user growth through this. But execution is a little bit questionable because if you can think about it, like you go to a hotel room and have a uh, user Netflix account and also at home. And so like, how do you make sure that it's someone like that's the same person if they're in two different locate if you go to two different locations right how can it be that or how how does netflix make sure that um even if you're traveling around it's okay that you're the one always kind of using your account even when different locations and such versus like maybe it is actually someone else in a different location using your password so that's something that's going to be a little bit uh tough i'd say i think for netflix the other thing is Netflix is planning to offer a cheaper subscription tier in exchange for Netflix with ads by the end of this year. And this is also pretty interesting. It could cannibalize existing users, but it also may be good for churn, which is like the number of users leaving leaving Netflix every, uh, let's say, month or every so every so often um, at a given in a given time period. And this is going to be a huge part of uh, Netflix's narrative, at least for this next one to I'd say two to three years. So over the past, uh, I'd say a few, one to two years or so, there's been a lot of talk about Netflix as being like a content creator in a sense um, and just creating its own content for uh, its its users and everything, right? 
But Netflix, uh, now there's been a lot of kind of research done that Netflix may be getting really efficient with its production costs. And now this kind of year end subscription uh, uh, tier that where Netflix is playing ads and it's like a cheaper tier. Um, that's going to be a big part of Netflix's story. And uh, because Netflix has saturated so many of its markets and is also facing a lot of competition, it may turn into becoming more of a profit story instead of growth story. So we'll kind of have to wait and see about that as well. Um, so now, now let me go into potential downsides or upsides. So slower growth of content costs, especially if they, you know, work with more kind of international markets, like, like in Korea, how Squid Games did super well, but for, I think, a fraction of the cost for a lot of other US-based shows. So that's potential upside. Uh, faster subscriber growth than expected, international expansion. These are all like ways that we could see upside to the stock. And then for potential downside, increase in content costs. New competitors are new competitors is a big one, especially with Disney Plus doing well, um, Hulu, like all these different competitors. Then there's execution challenges in new markets, in international markets, and also with their whole strategy for uh, cracking down on passwords and then having like a cheaper ads uh, based tier. And then obviously there's a recession risk, which has been kind of all over the news lately. Um, by the way, I don't see any chats. I just wanted to make sure, let me just double check to see if my chat thing is on, which I think it is. Uh, does Can anyone enter something in the chat to make, I wanna make sure that it's working. Oh wait, just kidding, now I see them. For some reason I wasn't seeing them. Okay, so uh, re yeah, re really quick um, reminders and disclaimers. Uh, one, I'm not a financial advisor. I think you guys all know that by now. Second, there's a lot of additional qualitative research needed. You know, I, I wanted to provide a little bit more this time around, but if you really want to invest well, it's not just about the numbers. And so that kind of leads to the high level of uh, or this analysis, right? I think sometimes in the comments, people are like, oh, why don't you do like a revenue build or like go more de into detail about costs? And I'm like, dude, how am I supposed to get detailed information about the future next five to 10 years. Like I, I don't have access to what equity research analysts have access to. So this is kind of more of like a high level street based DCF to help you do uh, your research. And I do hope it's, it's, it's helpful for all of you. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much the situation overview. Oh, actually I kind of skipped this. Uh, I guess I did reminders and disclaimers. Um, second. But now I did want to let you guys know a bit about Wall Street Prep, which is uh, the sponsor for today's video, as you probably see in the corner of this um, thing, but uh, of the screen. But um, some of you guys may be familiar with them um, because they're pretty well known. So they work with a lot of different institutions, banks, uh, even like uh, schools to help teach students about investment banking. And they also have these like self-study online courses that I think are super helpful, especially if you're interested in recruiting for banking or work in finance and whatnot. And they have a ton of courses that cover a lot of kind of like every, any, almost anything you can think of. Like the, their most um, popular and one that I'd recommend if you're trying to like recruit for banking is their premium package where, which I'll go through in a little bit. But as you can see here, they have one for like real estate, restructuring, oil and gas, some of the parts valuation. And then they have more like basic stuff like accounting, analyzing reports, um, Excel, and some banking kind of guides and stuff like that. And for, oops, I was supposed to go to the premium package here. I wanted to just show you guys the reason I think this is so valuable. And if you use my code rare liquid, you get 20% off of this 500 or any other course. Um, you basically get to learn everything that uh, I learned in banking. So financial statement modeling, DCF modeling, M&A, trading comms, transaction comps, LBO, pretty much everything that I needed to know in banking, you'll learn here and also if you are not familiar with accounting, I do recommend taking accounting first. That's kind of like just the foundation for all anything in finance. And um, last thing I'll mention is that Andrew Federico. So he used to work with me at JP Morgan in the healthcare group, and he's now working at Wall Street Prep, which I think speaks volumes to the amount of talent uh, that Wall Street Prep really has, because I can guarantee you his uh, salary is not cheap. Um, so yeah, that's Wall Street Prep. And I went through reminders and dis disclaimers. So now we're just going to go through and build the DCF. Oops. 
And of course, I'm not, I'm going to be using my mouth, mouse as little as possible. Uh, and as I build everything, if you um, later on actually want to check out my, uh, I made a video about Excel shortcuts because so many of you guys have kind of asked for that. And so um, in my description, there are videos like related videos you can look at that will link to that Excel video and like a bunch like some other stuff about like how to uh, uh, DCF basics and stuff like that. All right, so we're gonna get started. This should look pretty familiar with, for a lot of you guys who have been like following these kinds of videos before. And um, let's see, what's today's date? 7, 19, 22. And if you just joined as a friendly reminder, um, these, uh, sorry, uh, I'm not the best at modeling and talking at the same time. Um, as a friendly reminder, Netflix is reporting earnings later today. And so that's like the purpose of uh, today's uh, DCF. I wanted to see what uh, Netflix's valuation looks like on a DCF basis, given that it's fallen down so much today or over the past year. Okay, so let's see. Um, First things first, we want to just have everything set up. So the, what we're going to have are our assumptions section. And then later on, we're going to have our uh, income statement. And then we're going to have our um, financial or oops, cash flow items. And then we'll have our DCF. So that's what we're going to build towards. And um, all right, so, okay. So assumptions we're gonna do a little bit later. Uh, I actually realized that I was supposed to grab Netflix's financial statements and information before I started the stream so it saved some time, but I forgot to do that. Maybe it'll be interesting for you guys to just kind of see uh, how I do this with FactSet. I'm also gonna turn on the AC because it's I'm in Korea right now and it's like super hot, uh, even though it's late here. Let me know if it gets distracting, the sound, and I can turn it off. All right, but this is what FactSet looks like. And this is kind of like a very popular database in addition to um, CapIQ that a lot of bankers use. So I'm just going to be downloading the income statement line items and uh, probably cash flow. I don't think I need balance sheet. All right, so... You can see there's like a bunch of like information. Um, okay, so we're gonna want our gap figures. All right, and then actually, all right, and so as I kind of like uh, download all this data. Another way you can find this kind of information is going to bamsec.com. And um, that's like another, you can just like, I forget exactly how much they cost, but it's, it's pretty affordable. So another way to kind of download all this information pretty quickly. Obviously also all this information is um, public. So you can also go to Edgar, but the interface is like not as, not as nice as this. Okay. Uh, book one. All right, so I moved this over here. So this is the income statement. And then I need the cash flow statement, which I think I downloaded. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Okay. By the way, I'm always so surprised about how many people actually watch these streams and uh, join the streams and whatnot because I don't know. These videos tend to be pretty long. So, um, very uh, grateful to be honest that so many of you guys are interested in this kind of content. 
All right, DCF. Um, okay, so uh, let me save this file first. So today's July 19th. Okay, I'm also actually, so right now, as a lot of you know, I'm currently um, doing an MBA at, at Wharton. And I've actually been looking at their valuation courses. And uh, I think it'll be very interesting to see. I'm, I'm most likely going to take it. Uh, I don't know exactly how much I'll learn be, since I did go into banking, but I do think that it'll be a good refresher for a lot of details. And I'm hoping that if I do learn any kind of new methodologies or parts of or, or something that kind of like uh, would be good to share with all of you, then i look forward to that video as well. Probably will come sometime near towards the end of uh, this year. And by the way, I'm doing this because I'm going to later link to all of these uh, figures. And this is a little bit tedious. And this is why I wanted to do this before the stream, but I just like totally blinked out and forgot. Uh, but since we're going to be doing everything from left to right, I need to have all this data also reformatted in, into this way. And then the cash flow statement, I will have to do the same thing. So bear with me on this as well. Oops. All right, there probably is a better way to do this too, but I'm not really sure. I don't know, maybe I could like transpose the data or something. Oops. But what are, what are you guys like, what are all your backgrounds? Um, like where are you guys all from? And I guess like, why are you interested in these streams? I, I'm, I'm genuinely curious to know. Uh, I know a lot of people like obviously are uh, looking to kind of invest in different companies and that's partially why. I'm wondering if more people are like students trying to learn or if more people are like actual investors. Ooh, Poland. Wow, super international crowd. Wow, I'm surprised. No, well, I guess. It kind of makes sense that no one's maybe from the States right now because it's kind of early in the States. All right, but we are almost done here. Wow, super diverse crowd. That's awesome. I actually, for my MBA right now, I'm in this like international program and I've been meeting a lot of people from a lot of different countries and it's been actually very nice hearing like so many different perspectives. And, um, but with that said, we got all our data kind of ready now. So let's go, let's just start like plugging in everything that we need. Um, or like start building this out essentially. So we're going to project out probably for the next 10 years. Okay. So we're going to need revenue. Um, EBIT percent growth percent of sales um okay so we have revenue ebit we're going to need taxes okay so uh, let's, yeah. So what I'm doing now is I'm just linking to our revenue figures, pretty standard stuff. Uh, 22, 22, obviously is not over yet. And by the way, also I'm going to be doing all of this now. And obviously, uh, Netflix has, is reporting later tonight or today after market close. And I'm going to, after each of my DCF videos, I'm going to do like a follow-up video that's a lot shorter keep it around like 10 to 15 minutes where i uh go over um 
I'll be going over like trading comps, which is another like very quick and easy valuation methodology that's really important. And then uh, briefly go over what I think about the um, company's earnings report that like just comes out, right? And kind of compare that with my DCF value that I get to today. So I'm going to do that after each of like the DCF videos because some people, some of you guys have requested that. And also let me know if you guys have any, um, if you guys have any like questions about, or if you have any certain video types of videos you want me to make. Cause uh, last time you guys asked, asked me for like an Excel one. And then I made that and like, it seemed like a lot of you guys watched that one. Uh, so yeah, do let me know. Um, okay. So in looking for taxes right now and before taxes provision benefit from income taxes. So it's right here. I'm going to make this a positive figure so that I, uh, oops, this should be percent of EBIT. Okay. For some reason, I just really like it better when there's this uh, parentheses with the for negative instead of um, the negative number. I think that's actually pretty common amongst like a lot of people in finance, or maybe it's just a common thing in general. Oh, oops. Okay. So now I'm going to change this color to green because uh, it's always good to color code your model so that when you're auditing it later, uh, people know exactly like where all the data is coming from. So green just means that it's from a different uh, sheet, which is like part of this sheet, right? And then Black mean it's being calculated. Purple, which I'll show you guys later, is just like it's it's from the same. Um, uh, purple means it's from the same sheet, and then there's red, which means like something kind of weird or different's going on. Uh, but anyway, the next thing I want to do is to go uh, to provide to provide some uh, or to get some of our estimates, which we'll be pulling from here ish basically. And I guess I could just download this too. That'd be probably a little bit easier. Yeah, let me do that. So I see a question, will I upload the Excel file that I'm working on? So I, it's actually, they're, they're only, oops. Uh, so these files are only available to Patreon members, but one thing that I am going to change is right now the um, Patreon member, like what what's available. Uh, this is only available to terabyte patrons, which is like ninety nine bucks a month. So I, I set it to that because you know I feel like this a lot of work is put into each of these models. But I'm actually going to change my Patreon a lot, or probably starting next month, where people in the gigabyte patron tier, which is twenty bucks a month, um, this my DCFs will be available. So starting next month, I'm going to make some changes. Uh, so like, I guess like that was, it. uh, so yeah, I, I think it'll be much more affordable starting next month, just like as a heads up, I guess. Okay. So not going to need any of this cause these are historicals, but let's make sure that they're correct. So let's see. Twenty nine six nine eight should be twenty twenty one, so that's correct. Our equals twenty twenty two. Sales. Okay. Oops. So as as I've shown you guys in the past, so these are sales estimates that, or oops, sorry, these are sales estimates that Wall Street Equity Research Report, Equity Research Analysts come up with. Let me show you what those files look like in a sense. So these are reports that um, different banks put, put out every so often about companies. So we have Bank of America, uh, Wedbush, this one's Benchmark, 
um, Barclays, JP Morgan, etc., Morgan Stanley. And they basically do a lot of research to see, uh, and they kind of like provide a bunch of these estimates, which I'll show you here as to what they think a company's financial statements should be for, how they should be forecasted over the next, um, usually three to five years. And it's taking forever to load. Uh, okay. So for example, if we look here at sales, Oh man, I don't know why this is oh, it's okay, it's lagging. So you can see all these different banks or equity research analysts, and they have all these projections as to what they think Netflix's sales is going to be for the next few years. And you can also see that a lot of these uh, estimates kind of drop off. And that's why your first, your first upcoming year, so 2022 for us, and then 2023, these are a lot more reliable than 2024, where you see a lot of people kind of drop off. And so it's not a very apples to apples, fair comparison year to year, right? And 2025, you can see it drops off even, even more. So from based on this, I would say that 2022 to 2024 is fairly reliable and 2025, we may want to use our own projections instead. So something good to note, um, 2025 and onwards don't really want to rely on too much. So just make like an X here. Uh, but let's see what the growth rate looks like. Yeah. So this is, you can kind of see why this is weird. Uh, well, actually in general, what's also just odd is that you see a huge decline in revenue growth and then an incline, right? And that's pretty uncommon for a company of Netflix's size. Um, so I, I think what is happening though, is that Netflix is not expected to have a good year in 2022 and is going to be building out. Um, or making strategic changes that we discussed earlier here, right? So uh, subscriber growth fell a lot recently and is expected to this upcoming quarter. And Netflix is going to crack down on password sharing. It's going to offer a cheaper ad-based subscription tier, right? And I think maybe as estimates are going up because uh, analysts expect those, strate th that, those strategic improvements to like actually work. Um, or it could just be that, you know, uh, not, we're not having like a full great comparison to, um, with all of the different estimates. And so that's why it's a little wonky, but, um, okay. So this is actually just revenue. Um, all right. Yeah. Sorry that I didn't download all this earlier. Uh, okay. Here, this is actually what I wanted. Okay, where's that dumb thing? Hmm, not sure why it's not downloading. Oh, it's here. Okay. Oops. All right, so this is actually what we wanted and this is not what we want. So oh, I'm forgetting some of my, some of my shortcuts. Oh, got it. All right. So this is not what we want. We actually want these from 2022 sales. Okay. Now we're linked. Stop pasting the formatting and then for EBIT, same thing. Mm, I guess that's contribution profit. Let's double check. 6195 2021. 6195. Oh, it's right here. Operating income. All right. And then taxes. Oops. Oh, 
Okay, so now we have all our projections for our income statement, which is the main thing that we really needed. And we put an X over here. And this will allow us to easily go to each section. Okay. And then cash flow statement. Formatting is a little odd. Oops. Hmm. Sorry for not talking, I'm kind of trying to get into the zone a little bit. Uh, if you guys have any questions, so I, I know in previous streams, I tried to not answer questions, but I'm going to try to answer more questions and be a little bit more interactive. The reason I didn't really try to in the past is because it's, uh, I'm not, I guess I'm not like super good at multitasking when it comes to this stuff. Cause I have to kind of like think as I'm like modeling and whatever, but it is fun interacting with all of you guys. So do l let me know if uh, you guys have any questions or comments. Also, if I make any mistakes, which has happened before, let me know so I can fix my model. <laughs> and if a lot of this, if a lot of this stuff kind of looks really new to you, I do have a video um, about DCFs in the description and there's like kind of a beginner's one and I am planning to also make one that's more of like a beginner's tutorial in, in Excel as well ins instead of only being theoretical. So uh, be on the lookout for that as well. All right, so we're going to get our DNA here from our cash flow statement. Just some formatting here. Huh. Very odd, it only goes, oh yeah, that makes sense. So your question, can you make videos about operational risk? I don't, I don't really think I know even what operational I don't know enough about operational risk to talk about it. So not really my expertise, unfortunately. Huh, really, really low figures. This is like suspiciously low. DNA, oh, actually, um, yeah, actually, I guess this makes sense because it's like a tech company in a sense, really low capital expenditures. So this also means that it's not going to be super meaningful to our analysis. Wait, hold on. Uh... No, wait, these numbers are high. Amortization, our CapEx, purchase of plant property and equipment. Huh. Let me just double check on FAM SEC. So these are like uh, financial statements for companies. I want to see what the DNA is because it looks a little bit too low. I feel like I'm maybe not. Uh, yeah, maybe I should add the amortization of content, but also like purchases of on property equipment, uh, two, two, five, 490 million depreciation, and amortization, 208, 115, 103, hmm. amortization of content assets. 
Uh, do we add this back? I would think so. Hold on, I'm actually going to, let's see, okay. This is so odd. Um, I'm definitely, I'm actually, I, I think I'm definitely linking to the wrong thing. Uh, okay, so this is adjustments, amortization of content library. Depreciation, depreciation, amortization, stock-based comp. Okay, so what it looks like I should be doing is adding this and this. But, uh, sorry, I'm going to cheat a little bit and see what equity research analysts do. Um, because normally you're supposed to kind of look into this yourself and see what you should be adding back. But... Uh, I don't want to spend too much time doing that. Um, I've got to find one that actually builds out a DCF though. Which I don't remember which one did. Okay. Um... So capital expenditures looks like it should be around 2% of sales. Depreciation, amortization. Okay, I guess it is around something like 1%. But when it comes to amortization of content, do they add that back? Ah, uh... Okay, I think this is what we want. So CapEx is should be around 1%. EBITDA, okay, DNA. Oh wait, this is for international streaming. Okay, yeah, CapEx is around 1%. Which makes me think our DNA, we don't want to be adding back our um, amortization of content rights. So, okay. So I think, let's see. This is going to somewhere around 208 and then 525. So I think this should make sense. Because ultimately these two, uh, cap CapEx and DNA should kind of, be roughly in line with one another as time goes on and also for this analysis it doesn't seem like it's going to be a big part a big driver so uh, nothing to worry about too much let me know if you guys disagree though and you guys think i should be adding this amortization of content library um because if it is something they're subtracting out of their uh income statement then maybe but i don't think it would make sense to use here for netflix Okay, uh, the other thing was change in operating assets and liabilities. It looks like all this stuff is not going to be super meaningful. Pretty low in terms of percentage of sales. So it's really, the entire model is really going to hinge on what we think makes sense for our revenue growth and EBIT. Because um, taxes are kind of like uh, not really going to change our analysis that much, right? Um, it's just going to be a based on revenue growth and our EBIT. It's, it's going to drive this model. And that is different from other types of companies like that have really high capital expenditures and it could result in a, you know, those could be huge assumptions for our model, but for, for our cases here, I don't think so. 
All right, I'm going to look for DNA estimates. All right, DNA, DNA. Capital expenditures. Hmm. I don't see DNA, uh, but I do see CapEx. Um, so I'll at least download this for now. Oh, okay. Oops. Cap expenditures twenty twenty two. Then DNA. Mm, gonna have to find this somewhere. Depreciation. Oh, okay, let's see. Hmm. Actually, it looks like est estimates actually does include that content uh, depreciation or amortization. So maybe it is something that we want to include. I'm going to double check again with our um, equity research reports. I think this is actually very helpful. That actually means though it's going to be a pretty huge part of or it's going to, well, let me double check something here. Okay, so we have purchase and plant party and equipment. I'm wondering if there's like something where we can also include how much they're spending on content. Oh, addition to content assets. Mm, so I think this is what they're spending on, uh, how much they spend to like get content. I don't know if we want to project that though. Changing content liabilities, amortization of content assets. All right, I'm going to have to dig through the financial or through, through the uh, um, equity research reports to try to get a clearer picture. See. Oh, this is a lot trickier than I expected, to be honest. Uh, okay, current content library, prepaid content. But hopefully this is also interesting and I'm not losing you guys because uh, um, this is also a lot of times what you have to do just on the job is like kind of understand the company's financial statements. And it's not it's not always like so obvious what exactly you should do um all right so depreciation amortization okay so they are adding that amortization um then their capex is super small oh uh, but they are subtracting out their acquisitions of content library okay so i guess that is what we should do as well i think that does make sense um, so let me get that data we were looking at. Huh, we're getting a lot of sheets in here. Okay, so DNA. Let's see. So 
So amortization of content library plus depreciation amortization of that. All right, so this is now a huge part of our analysis. And then capital expenditures will be twenty twelve. Yeah, so this will be ad addition to streaming content assets, and then I want to add this with capital expenditures. Hmm. Okay, and this All right, so yeah, this will be tricky. Hmm. I actually think Hmm. All right, first let me look at see if you guys have any comments here um i think this camera length can be moved asymmetrically yeah i'm thinking about moving these or separating these two I, I do think we should do that i think that would be a good idea i was i was honestly just trying to skip a step but probably not a good idea to do that oops This is DNA, and then this is, oh, linked to the wrong thing, amortization of content library. Amortization. Okay. And this as well. This is normal capital expenditures. And then this is additions to streaming content assets. So this is like super uncommon, but basically Netflix treats its capital expenditures as what it spends on new content assets. That's how it seems um, the street and people just, that's how they model for Netflix. All right, so then get this as Percentage of sales, then a percentage of capex, and then this as a percentage of sales, and as a percent of additions to streaming content. Huh. That's weird. Oh, I don't know why this is linked. Oh, it's because I was, uh, sorry. I was linking to different things and then I like copy pasted it to the uh, wrong row. So that's why that wasn't working. Okay. So now this looks probably all good, but let me just double check everything. So amortization of content library, capital expenditures. And this is additions to streaming content, which all looks good. So percentage of sales, I'm gonna anchor this. All right, kind of almost getting towards building out the DCF, which is kind of what we're all here for, I guess. <laughs> uh, okay, I see a question. Any reason you skip building the three SM? Um, because it just takes way too much time, to be honest. 
And I, normally, even at JP Morgan, we didn't actually build three statement models for our clients. Um, it's not really something you need to do all the time. Okay, capital expenditures. Actually, that'd be probably a really good video, building a three statement model. Um, I haven't really done one in a while, but I'm I could kind of brush brush up on it and then, oops. And then make one of those videos later. Percent of... What is this? Oh yeah, percentage of sales. And so air conditioning is like, it gets really cold, hot in this room that I'm in and then it gets really cold when I turn on the AC. Like this constant battle. All right, anyway, so now we have our DNA, amortization of content library. Hopefully, it'd be nice if we had projections for all this so I don't have to like make these too much myself. Uh... Oh. Doesn't look like we're gonna find it. Amortization of content library streaming, library DVD, appreciation. Ooh, okay, so we do have it. Maybe I can just download everything though, so I don't have to um, copy each or get it from each different like sheet. So while this is loading, um, could we see increase in operation costs, decrease in EBIT as Netflix requires investments in technical side in order to achieve strategic goals with code base and data regulation? I don't think that the big cost for Netflix is going to be tech, like coding related, because uh, they've already Netflix has already built that out so much. I think these days a lot of what the cost uh, for Netflix entails is um, uh production costs for their new shows and stuff. All right, so estimates need. Okay, awesome. Amortization of content and then depreciation and then additions, perfect. This is exactly what we need. So I guess I, wow, Faxa has a lot of data. I guess I could build out a more detailed revenue build if I wanted to. Um, maybe in the future for other companies, I'll try to have a more detailed revenue build. All right, I also need to clean up all this stuff. So estimates. Actually, this is a lot of stuff. Uh, this what is this okay um dna is here starting 2022 amortization of content library is 2022 is this plus oh they still have their they're still reporting some dvd stuff interesting capital expenditures not here All right, 2022, capital expenditures. Okay, and then we need additions to streaming content. I'm so happy we have all this data. It's one of like the hardest parts of modeling, just having data. Okay, and then future change in network and capital, we can just kind of calculate this ourselves. It looks like it's around zero, zero uh, percent of sales, so not a big deal. 
All right, we made it now to our DCF. Uh, so I see a question, what are the keyboard shortcuts I use? As I kind of actually said earlier on in the video, if you look at my related videos, there's a video on Excel uh, tips and stuff like that. Or sorry, Excel shortcuts. So um, definitely recommend you check, check out that video if you wanna learn more about Excel stuff. And in case you're wondering why I, I like built all this stuff here in order to basically have the same stuff down here, um, you'll kind of see in a bit, but uh, I did think it's just like a help. Usually it's helpful to build this, things out differently, especially if you're like, let's say have a very detailed revenue build, then you just want like a summary here. In our case, we're kind of just using street estimates, taking a really big shortcut. So um, that's why it kind of looks a little bit more silly here. There's input overlay plugin for streaming in OBS. What does that mean? That sounds that sounds very helpful. I'm awaiting Sana's reply. Dang it. Yeah, let's... All right, then we need DNA. Oh, what I should probably do actually. All right, actually, I, I forgot. I, I need to kind of look at these numbers and think about them. And I should probably add them together as well. So total, let's just call it DNA, even though it's, little bit different than DNA. Okay, so it shows in real time which keyboard and mouse buttons you're pressing. Ooh, I'll definitely have to look into that. Thank you for the suggestion. I will definitely try to add that in uh, the next modeling video. Oh, that actually brings up a good kind of point. So I'm going to... um start modeling for, uh, because earning seasons right now, I'm going to be modeling during throughout the season, I guess. And so there I'm going to next week be doing one for Apple and one for Microsoft. So be on the lookout for that. If you're going to, if you're interested in that as well. I was someone Korean. 한국에, 한국어 채널은 만들 생각 없으신가요? So like, are, do you have any, I, uh, do you have any thoughts of creating a Korean channel? And my Korean is not good. So unfortunately not. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you, if you could link that here, that'd be great. Sana. All right, we have 149 people still here going strong. Okay, so let's see, revenue. Oh wait, I was gonna look at these numbers. So we should also add. All right, so we have our total DNA, which as a percentage of sales is quite high. And that's just because Netflix is spending so much on their content. And this is, yeah, this is actually, it is good to have as part of like our cash flow projections because which is what we're gonna build towards since a lot of what they're spending on is content. And it looks like as a percentage of uh, CapEx, um, it looks like 
DNA is going to trend towards our, our CapEx, which is what we want to see, and go from around 80% to um, 90%. But again, we have to remember that these are not super reliable projections. Let me just add, I'm going to add like a line here so I don't forget. And also a line when our projections start, which is here. All right. So um, I think this will this helps make it a little bit easier to project out in the future because this is such a huge um, as uh, such a, these are huge uh, parts of our analysis now and kind of seeing like very uh, that street think that the, these numbers will kind of like linearly decline and show that this will be like close to growth close to like ninety percent of capex. Um, that is really helpful. It, it, it makes things a little bit easier for us. So I see a question. Why isn't it percentage of CapEx plus additions? So this actually is, so this, this incorporates, so this incorporates both CapEx, CapEx plus additions. Uh, I'm just calling it. All right. I think maybe so I don't confuse you guys. I'll, all right. I, I'll write this out. Okay. All right, we're ready to start projecting. And let's see, it's right now, what time is it? 11.45, okay, I have I have a call in 45 minutes, so hopefully I'll finish by then. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier on the video, for the same sheet normally you wanna make it purple. So unrelated question, are corporate finance internships helpful? I'm trying to break into IB. I do think anything in finance will be helpful. So I do, I do, I do think it'd be helpful. And if, yeah, if you don't have anything in your resume yet, then you just, you always want to start somewhere. So, oops, so EBIT is here. By the way, um, quick little plug if you guys, because uh, I used to make a bunch of career related videos on this channel, as a lot of you guys know. And if you want to uh, see more career related videos for like finance stuff or banking, my MBA experience, I have a careers channel called Rare Liquid Careers. And yeah, you guys can check that out if you're interested. Okay, all right, so we got all our historicals here. Let me do that also for our DNA, CapEx, change in networking capital. Uh, let me see what we're gonna use here. Um, I think we, I think we want to use our percentage of CapEx. Oh, actually this is very flat as a percentage of sales. That's very interesting. Hmm. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna write down both here. Percentage of sales, percentage of CapEx. Hmm, should we project this out separately? Okay, no, I think it's fine. Well, sorry. Uh, so this is growing down, going down from 54% down to around 48%. Well, this is just 2%, 1%, kind of negligible. So DNA and CapEx are actually like not a huge part of um, the overall analysis. So I think it's fine to just do it as a percentage of cap or not, not have to kind of like project out all uh, these like separately. Okay, so there we have DNA and then we have CapEx. So I wanna make this a percentage of sales. And then change change in networking capital. And for this, let's see here. Yeah, let's just use percent of sales, which is like near zero.
Then we have our cap X, which is here. Okay, so the percentage of cap X. All right, quick poll as I'm doing this. How many of you guys are bullish on Netflix and how many of you are bearish? So just write bullish or bearish in, in the chat. I'm curious to know what you all think. Ooh, a lot of bearish. <laughs> It is kind of scary if you do think about Netflix and how much it's come down. It was like one of the darlings of Wall Street, right? And now to see it struggling so much, it kind of makes you think like, wow, any company can just like fall really quickly in a year. Even even like the top companies. Like who would have been bearish on, um, on, on Netflix just a few years back if you think about it? But I do think uh, what's interesting is that if a company, even though they were great in the past, and if their stock gets hit way too hard, then even if like there's not a great kind of um, growth story anymore, it can still make for a uh, a good stock to buy. So um, I guess that's part of this analysis, right? Like based it, companies can get over traded like over. Um, they can be, they can fall more than they should in a sense, especially in like, like a recession or um, not recession, but sorry, this is my, as I mentioned, my failure to do, uh, my failure to be good at multitasking is showing here, but um, what was I even saying? I honestly don't remember. <laughs> okay. What was I saying? I was saying, oh yeah, so stocks can be, even with when they don't have growth stories or and whatnot, can still be like a good, companies, even though if they're not growing like crazy, they can still be a, a good stock. It's kind of based on, uh, we'll see based on this analysis today. So competition is much higher nowadays. Yep, definitely agree. Okay, so what are we doing about DNA and sales? Hmm. I'm not sure if I'm gonna want to make different scenarios for DNA and CapEx. I think in order to save some time, I don't think we're gonna need to do that. So, or sorry, I'm not, I don't think we need different scenarios for these cash flow items. Um, actually, would we? No, actually, we probably do. All right, percentage of sales, forty-four percent. Let's see. Yeah, this is steady. This going to that. Hmm. Which one should we use? I like that this is more steady and more, it, it makes things a little bit easier to model out. And so I think as a percentage of sales, that's what we're going to go with. Hmm. I love this discussion you guys are all having. See a question about when you're starting to model, like what do you need to do? <coughs> Excuse me, I'm drinking some water. Honestly, the most important thing is learning accounting. So I would definitely focus on that first. There's not even three, three things you need to do. That's the number one thing. 
Um, which by the way, as I mentioned earlier on the video, if you guys are interested in, in uh, Wall Street Prep, feel free to check them out. They do have like really good financial modeling courses. Um, all right, so, all right, 9%, 8%, 10%. Very odd, but an interesting growth. I again, I, so I don't know how accurate this like potential decline and incline is going to be. Uh, let me just look at the, what the oops, what the brokers are saying or what it what it actually looks like here. Twenty twenty four. So yeah, this is a oh wait no. This is a little below the mean. It drops out. Okay, I mean I think we have enough critical mass to oh wait, this thirty six. Uh so some of the more optimistic people do drop out. Uh thirty five K, thirty five K. Yeah, interesting. So I don't love these numbers. Like I think it's very odd to think that oh Netflix is going to be growing at nine percent, fall back to eight percent, and then grow to ten percent, right? Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with like a lot of these uh, estimates kind of dropping off, and so. While this isn't the cleanest thing to do, I think what makes sense is to grow this by the difference between this and this. So it's not more of like linear growth. So what that this really will look like, oh, what the heck? Uh, or maybe it makes sense to just make this an average. Yeah. So it's like, uh, it's not going to make a huge difference because it's just like a, a few less than 1% change, right? But I think this this linear growth, um, if you believe that Netflix is going to grow to 10% in 2024, that makes more sense to me than having it go from 8% to, or 9% to 8% to 10%. So we're going to do that for here. And this is where, honestly, is this like the best way to uh, predict out revenue, which is one of your most important um, projections, right? No, like ideally you have a, you build out a revenue build and you have like all these different assumptions and you're able to have like a more clean uh, and educated revenue projection, right? But for our purposes, given that this is just a street-based analysis, we're just gonna kind of take this shortcut in a sense. And Okay, so after that, let's kind of see how things shape up. Um, generally, I do think that, so we'll use kind of this as a rough guide, but you can see that even though it's not um, super reliable, it does seem like we're going to see a decline, right, of a few percentage points over time. I think that that doesn't shouldn't come as a surprise to a lot of us, given that over time, there's going to be a lot of competition already so much saturation like a lot of you guys have mentioned in the text that it i think in a base case for it netflix to fall to a three percent grower that might almost be an optimistic case it might actually fall to something like two percent um so in this in this scenario i'm not going to be like oh uh super super conservative because since we do have a con our conservative case So now we're going to have to start building our assumptions and I'm going to hide this so that this is easier to see. Okay. So I'm going to actually uh, take from, uh, in order to save a little bit of time, I'm going to take from a previous model that I built and have like our assumptions um here i'll show you guys what i mean so all right yes so this is just going to be i'm going to probably change a lot of these 
but this is from my Google DCF and we're going to need all this stuff. So I'm just going to copy paste this and I'll go through each one. So don't worry about like not knowing what some of these are and whatnot. Okay. So we have our conservative case, base street slash base case and optimistic case. And in our base case in 2031, I want to be growing this down to 3%. And we want to have all our assumptions here like, like this so that we can easily just in the future change this to like 5%, 4%, 3%, and then the model is like super flexible in that way. Oh, wow. This person, let me ban this person real quick who's like spamming the chat. Uh, all right, and then we're gonna just simply grow this down by that minus 3% divided by our number of years. All right, cool. So, um, so we see a little bit of revenue growth from Netflix, maybe because they, uh, based on what we think about their um, strate strategy changes that we discussed earlier on in the video. And then over time, we might see it actually decline unless they do some crazy M&A or enter this like new market that we just like are unaware of. But I think this is a good base case um, because I think a lot of people know the challenges Netflix currently faces. And it's going to be hard to really see how Netflix is going to like become like this hyper growth company again in the past, like, you know, growing in double digits unless they, you know, really somehow change things up. Um, so that's our, our street base, base case. And then for our um, conservative case, you know, for this first upcoming year, I don't think we want to, uh, because six months have already passed, that means like analysts already really know at least half of what's going to happen. And so they just need to project out another six months. And usually they're not like too wrong about it. So 2022, I think we don't need to have this assumption be changed. Um, actually, let's keep that in there just in case. Okay, so that's going to be our first year. Just like assume that the street's correct. And then in our conservative case, um, I think what we want to do for 2023 and 2024 is just decrease it by a certain percent and increase it by a certain percent. So 23 to 24, let's say our conservative case bakes in a 80% 80, 80 of our uh, base case. And then our optimistic case has like 120%. And I'll, we'll change these numbers a little bit, but you know, the whole point of all this is it may seem like, you know, hey, are you just like taking numbers out of thin air? Um, but we're basing everything based off of the street, right? So we have like a base foundation and then we we're trying to build out different scenarios in order to see what is our range for evaluation. If we see it, have a very conservative case based on our, our um, foundation or like our base case or street case. And then if things go very optimistic, what is our range, right? And that's essentially the point of this whole analysis, a very very high level. Um, so yeah, see, so this optimistic case assumes, okay, Netflix's strategy of paid subscriber, that tier does super well and password sharing, they somehow do well. Maybe they're also expanding internationally, um, getting a lot of like really good content out there that decreases churn. That's 9%. That's what this optimistic case is saying. This uh, pessimistic case, I think what this would also include is like the potential recession risk, right? So I think that is something that is kind of incorporated in this conservative case as well. Um, 
I see some questions here. I wanna learn financial modeling, where should I begin from? And I kind of mentioned this earlier, but accounting is the first thing you wanna learn. And uh, you, you guys see Wall Street Prep in the corner over here uh, on the screen. This Wall Street Prep is a company that provides accounting courses, financial modeling courses, et cetera. So I would recommend checking them out. And um, if you wanna get 20% off, use my code rare liquid. All right. And then so for our conservative case, we're gonna to wanna to grow this down to, I'd say 1% and then revenue 2031. Actually, I'd probably make 1%, 3%. I don't know if Netflix can maintain being a 5% grower. I think 4% is more likely. Um, by the way, for th this, you know, 1%, 4%, what I'm, th these are a little bit easier to just kind of like conceptually think about, right? Like 1% um, growth is not very good for a tech company. If Netflix were to grow to something like 1% growth, that is very, that is very, very um, conservative in my view. Uh, maybe we should make this 5% actually. Just because, you know, who knows, maybe Netflix does have some kind of something up their sleeves that helps make them um, be super profitable in the future. Okay. All right. So now we want to build out or build our switch. So in the future, I, I will make a video about like what I'm doing here, but basically this will just help make our model. Oops. Model flexible. So as, so for, for example, if I want to go to conservative case, base case, optimistic case, you can see that the numbers change. That's the whole purpose of that. Okay, we've got the hardest thing out of the way. Uh, revenue growth and then e base case for our, our even margin. Ooh. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to finish this model before my call, to be honest. Um, oh yeah. Videos help a lot. I just started my MBA in Mexico. I'm crushing my financial modeling course. That's awesome to hear. Glad uh, this video is helping. Um, okay. Sorry, I need to take a little bit of a break. Okay. Uh, uh, base case, let's see. Our growth is at around 20%, pretty flat. And then the street thinks that it's going to grow over time, which makes sense as a company that is slowly kind of becoming a, um, it, it looks like Netflix is kind of becoming more of like a profit comp company that's focused on profits because you know it can't really focus on growth as much anymore. Um, and that's kind of what Apple has become as well. Like Apple is one of the most valuable companies, but they only grow by a few percentage points per year, but their, their profitability is like improving over time. So it looks like the street is growing it towards around 26% by 2027. Um, I wish we had a good comparison to see, uh, how much what we should what we could grow Netflix's re, uh, margins to, but I, you know what I I think what would make sense given the numbers we see here for our base case scenario, so we see it's growing to twenty six percent. These numbers again, as I've explained, are not super super reliable, but uh, I think I think there could be a strong case made that over the next ten years, if Netflix focuses on being a profitable company, there by the year of 2031, they could grow their EBIT margin to somewhere around 30%, possibly 
probably maybe like in our conservative case, in, in our um, base case. Let me see what it ends up looking like, but I think something around like 30%, 28%, 30%, something like that might make sense. Okay, so let's just put, uh, oh wait, 26%, no, okay, 28%. 30%, 32%. And, you know, there's also the chance that Netflix actually uh, starts investing in different in uh, different industries. Like, and I think some of you guys have been discussing about Netflix going into gaming, right? Which it has been discussed in the past. If Netflix starts to just suddenly spend a ton of money in different industries, then they totally could... They, they they may not reach these like uh, margin projections here, but we can only really go based off of the information that we have, right? And so, oh, what's going on here? Oh, I need to switch these. Um, so as of now, the thought process is that Netflix is going to potentially become a more profitable comp uh, com be a company that focuses more on profitability. These are weird. So this plus the difference between this minus this divided by, oops. Okay, so conservative in our, in our base case, so we had in uh, uh, our street estimates saying it said something like our or what did it say here i think it was 20 something percent 26 percent by 2027 uh so 23 24 26 maybe around 25 um i think that makes sense and then growing it ultimately to 30 percent i don't think that's like stretching the truth at all and then having it decrease to only increase to 28 percent and 32 percent i think that all makes sense to me And given our revenue growth is pretty low, I think this is shaping up to be overall a decently conservative um, DCF. Which, in today's time where it's uh, we're like at a potent, we're in a potential recession, I think it's good to be a little bit more conservative. So, um, twenty percent, twenty one percent. What I'm gonna do for these next ones, since there isn't that much of a change, I'm just gonna grow the rest of these linearly. So it's that plus difference between, well, actually we should just stay consistent and do the same thing as what we did earlier. So we'll do EBIT 2023 to 2024, that would be 80% and then 120%. Hmm, that's pretty low. 90%. Margins shouldn't change as much drastically as, uh, yeah, or margins should not be changing like super crazy drastically. So while revenue, I mean, revenue could, I don't know, revenue could change drastically, but margins like usually stay like relatively flat over uh, because your cost structure is you, normally you can kind of control it um, but revenue growth kind of depends on like customers I mean you can make an argument for either uh, but that may not always really be true but okay so I think this is shaping out to be a pretty good um, conservative case and optimistic case
I love how you guys are having these like side conversations because I think people it's always just great to see people like you know interested in finance investing stocks and all that stuff um okay so we've got 20 percent growing to 32 percent and it, we see like it potentially declining a little bit uh and then increasing over time i guess this could kind of encapsulate the potential of netflix's uh spending on content to kind of decline and then ultimately kind of improve over time. So I actually feel pretty good about all this with our different scenarios and whatnot. Okay, taxes. Hmm. Hmm, they're not even paying 21%. Interesting. Hmm, I'm debating as to whether or not we should make this. I don't know why Netflix, when they're such a large company, like how they're only paying this much in taxes. I think they should eventually be paying 21%. I don't know exactly what they're doing, but I'm not going to have... Wait, we have our projections, actually. 16, 15, 17, 18. Okay, so it seems like it's going to kind of grow towards 21%, which is the current tax rate. Let's see what that looks like if we linearly grow it. that plus the difference between that times that divided by our year minus our that year Okay, so it's then it's kind of growing towards 21%. I think this makes it's similar to what we have in our um, projections, right? Except it's going towards maybe 18%. So this is actually kind of low. I would consider this kind of to be our optimistic case. Um, street case, uh, I think to make our lives a little easier and because this isn't like a huge variance, I'm just going to make it equal to what the street is here and just hold it flat. And then our conservative case, let's see. So that's that. Uh, all right, so 16, 15%, 18%. Um, if we're on a conservative case, let's say this, I don't think we're gonna even use this, but let's say it just grows to like 25% because there's a new president that comes along that makes you know everything, uh, the tax rate higher. So let's make it linked. Something like taxes don't need to sweat sweat over too much. Um, okay, so we got that. We are almost there to get to our final, oops. OK, 
taxes. All right, so our EBIT is our earnings. So this is our earnings before interest and after taxes. So we get our EBIT minus our taxes. All right, and now we just need our DNA, CapEx, and change in networking capital. So, um, okay, honestly, I'm getting very tired now. So um, I'm gonna take a shortcut uh it it'd be ideal to have you know these different cases but given what we saw earlier where these things are kind of like flat i'm gonna just kind of like assume that things stay flat uh and this kind of declines in a sense like that so um I'll, ha I'll leave all this stuff here, but then not really like sensitize for it. And when I do think that what when, when I eventually go towards like my discussion of the potential price for Netflix based on our analysis, I'm going to just be using our base case anyway. So um, let me just build out the base case here, which would be, let's see, 44% around, it'll grow, let's say like it'll grow to around 45% of sales over time. That's what it kind of seems like to me. So this up here. DNA will grow to somewhere around 45% of sales. That equals that right sensitize this I'm just gonna actually delete this and this is live by the way to the person that asked well actually if you're watching this on YouTube it depends when you're watching this right now as at the current moment with this chat this is live uh, that well. That's just going to be a percentage of sales. All right, CapEx, see what it looks like with our projections here. Um, percentage of sale, uh, oh, it's over here, 56%. So growing from 63% growing down to around 50%. Oh wait, I realized, oh yeah, it's going to be flat. Okay. So that's fine. It seems like this is just declining over time and it's declining, declining meaningfully by a few percentage points each year. Uh, this is by 2027, but I think over time their CapEx, actually, I don't know if it'll really decline that much. I think it would kind of stay flat after a a while since they're always going to be spending on content so i'm going to just keep this at 50 percent or for uh 50 percent in the last year and grow it down to that and our capex and 
D and A are going to kind of like offset each other. So while this is a simplified assumption, it's, it's not really going to affect our analysis too much. So let's see what this looks like in 2027, 55%. Here is 49%. Mm, actually seems seems too high. So hmm. Eventually I think maybe I just want to make it to 50% by 2027 actually. Or make the, actually we, sales is gonna be higher, so I actually make this lower. Actually, then these would just offset each other. Oh, sorry. Actually, it starts at a higher base, so it won't offset each other like that. It will eventually in the future, which I don't think makes sense. So maybe we make this like 48%. Um, Forty-four percent, forty-nine percent. Yeah. Okay. So there's a five percent difference or so, and eventually, we can argue that they'll converge. Uh, let's see. Six. Uh, actually, this is a pretty important. Actually, so I want to make sure I get this right. Sixty-three percent, then fifty-six. So it seems like Netflix did make a huge, a lot of like investment over the past few years, and there is discussion that it's going to meaningfully decline. So actually the first three years, maybe I think what'd be good is if we use what the street, what the street is using. So let's delete this for now. DNA, instead of growing or decreasing it, we're going to just use what the street, street provides for the first few years. I think that's like a little bit more sound reasoning. And then we can, you know, incre increase or decrease over here. I think that makes more sense. So 44%, 45% of sales. Let's say that this increases to something like uh, 46%. Oops. So essentially very, very slowly, growing very, very slowly. Essentially staying flat. I make sure these are all correct. Okay, yeah. So it's just growing by four point three percent per year, um, which I think is like pretty reasonable. And then we should see it. We should see our capex kind of just declining over time, right? So this should be around forty nine percent. Oops. Capex typically is usually always larger than our DNA. So let's see, 2027, this is 51%, 49%. I guess this is a little bit more on the aggressive side. 42%, hmm, interesting. Okay, well, this is not gonna, I don't think this, this will affect our numbers too much if by changing this by a few percentage points. So I think that's fine. And then average for the past three years, this is like really not going to affect anything. I hate these like bots that come into our channel. Um, okay. Oops. So this is our change in networking capital, and this is just a percentage of our sales. 
also realized I should probably hide this. You guys can see more of what's actually important, which is our projections. All right, we made it. We have, we're back, we're at our cash flow figure now. So EBA plus DNA minus CapEx minus change in networking capital. This is our um, unlevered free cash flow. And then we're going to need to get our present value of free cash flow. Then we'll need our terminal value, present value of terminal value. Then that gets us to our enterprise value. Then we want to add cash. Subtract that. That gets us to our equity value. Then you get our number of shares. And this will get to our implied price per share. And then we can compare that with our current price per share and then see whether or not Netflix is a buy or sell. So present value of free cash flow. This is where we will need our WAC. Uh, okay, so these are our switches. Oh wait, no, this is our percentages. Um, so our WAC, I, I looked at a few equity research reports earlier. So, um, which company is this? Cowan thinks that we should use a 10.5% WAC. Um, Morgan Stanley also 10.5% WAC. So let's say like around 10.5% is like, I'm not going to spend too much time thinking about the WAC when we have other people who have spent hours and hours and hours and hours about thinking about the WAC, all right. Um, for these like other analysts. So let's do that. And then plus 1% that minus 1%. Uh, as far as I know, Netflix doesn't have minority interest. So, and then for Netflix, let's grow terminal growth rate 2%, 2.5%, 3%. And let's use our choose function for our WAC. Get that, that, and that. We don't have these assumptions, so I'm going to get rid of these. Okay, and then you can actually name these cells, and that'll come in handy in a little bit as I show you. Okay, so we have our present value of free cash flow, or we need to calculate it. To do that, you get our current year, your current year's free cash flow, divide by one plus your WAC all to the power of the year that you're in. And that is your present value of free cash flow. Okay. And then for our terminal value, we want to get our last year's free cash flow. Multiply that by one plus your terminal growth rate. Divide all of this by your WAC minus terminal growth rate. This is just a simple formula. And then present value is your terminal value divided by one plus your WAC. The power of the year, the last year of your projection. Enterprise value is your present value of free cash flow and your present value of terminal value, which doesn't seem very high, 83 billion. Um, but we'll change it. We'll have to uh, kind of look through our assumptions a little bit later as well. Um, let me look at Netflix's latest financial statement in order to get their cash and debt balance. Almost there, guys. We're almost at a share price. Uh, okay. Current assets, cash and cash equivalents is around 6 billion. Debt 
debt, short term debt, no debt, long term debt, 14 billion. I think it's 15, uh, is that right? So yeah, 15 million, 6 billion, okay. So not that much cash or debt on hand. Equity value is your enterprise value plus your cash minus your uh, debt. And then number of shares. Normally it's good to get your diluted share count. Uh, it's good to calculate it out and see what it turns out to, but I'm just going to get it from a fact set. So we have basic shares. Mm, where is diluted shares? Oh, here it is. 444.3. That leaves us with a share price of 188.2. What is Netflix at today? 188.72, oh, interesting. I didn't even mean it to get uh, that close, to be honest. Um, I was, uh, like when you build everything out, you don't really know what your final number is gonna be. You just build out the assumptions the best you can. But that's not our my final, like, oh, this is what I think Netflix is worse, worth. Um, so we have our, let's kind of like look at what everything looks like. So implied share price, and then our current share price. So, our implied share price is 188.21. And then our current share price, oh, did Netflix go up today? Oh, it went up 4%, 197.76. Right, so uh, one thing I noticed is that I changed this to um, revenue growth to be conservative earlier. So now what we want to do is think about what do we believe, or I guess for me, what do I believe uh, Netflix is going to, uh, how, how much are they going to grow by? What are their margins going to be? Like those are the main two driving assumptions. Like everything else, uh, like cash flow items, I'm not sensitizing just for this model. So let me... So in order to not confuse you guys, um, these are really the only switches we have for the model today. And yeah, so taxes also, I, I would just use our base case. So then it's a matter of really, do I think that Netflix is going to be able to uh, have reach more of like the base case or the optimistic case in terms of revenue growth? And then for margins, do I feel like, you know, is it going to reach 30% or 28%, 32%, right? I think what's likely is that, um, or what makes sense to me is to, based on looking on all this, the, the two scenarios that make sense to me are, are these. Well, I mean, I guess there's four if you want to like mix up, mix and match all of these. But I think there's a realistic chance that uh, Netflix reaches something around 28 to 30 percent by year 2031, and that their revenue is well. I guess this one percent could work well too, but um, three to five percent. So that's a little, being a little bit optimistic, right? If I were to kind of narrow it down, hmm. I probably really just honestly go with our base case, which implies that Netflix currently is at $217 per share. And let's see what our current like super pessimistic case looks like. Oh, wait, this should be actually a higher whack means it's more pessimistic. So we have our, let's see, super con conservative or conservative case base slash street case, street slash base case, and then our optimistic case. So our conservative case gives us 132.64, which implies we could see Netflix go down all the way 
by by 33 percent and then our street case uh implies 217.69 and that implies a 10 percent <clears throat> implies that we're ten, uh 10 percent upside and then in our super optimistic case netflix is at 334.74 that implies a 69 percent upside <clears throat> and the if i had to give like a rare liquid case um margins 30 percent revenue growth i i think i would honestly stick between the street case and like maybe if like you're really bearish on revenue so maybe somewhere around 188 to 217 right now based on what we know makes sense for netflix but if you're optimistic on um netflix overall as a business then i think like it, more on the more qualitative aspects that we discussed at the very beginning of this video then you know there is a, a lot of potential upside left with not with you know projections that are not super super crazy aggressive at all so ultimately i guess what i'm trying to say here is that i honestly believe that netflix is pretty fairly valued at its current price at 200 uh, 197.76 i don't think it's the best on a you know based on the analysis today i don't think it's like the best buy where you can expect a ton of upside so when you're investing you you know you always want to think about not only is this a good investment but how good of an investment is it compared to other companies right and other opportunities you have out there and so if you are super bullish on netflix and believe its story you know and whatnot and maybe after earnings like uh maybe there'll be a surprises that are very bullish for the company right then netflix could really see like a 69 percent increase um based on like the optimistic case that we have here so to, you know trade in the two to three hundred dollar range i wouldn't be surprised if netflix does rebound a bit to that because netflix is still like a really great company i think it's right now with kind of the market coming down people are a little bit pessimistic about it but on the flip side if there is a recession i i think like it's super easy for netflix to fall down to 132. so um for me i would personally stay away from netflix right now i think there are better opportunities out there and it already seems like fairly valued like if we had our implied share price come out at like you know a hundred uh or like three to four hundred dollars and the current share price is you know 200 then it's like oh yeah you should we should probably buy netflix but based on what we know today and this analysis i don't think netflix is like a screaming buy but let's see what happens with earnings today and um as i mentioned before i'll have another video uh tomorrow after earnings that kind of goes over like what happened in earnings and as one you know last friendly reminder um if you do want to learn more about financial modeling and whatnot wanted to give another shout out again to our sponsor wall street prep for um, sponsoring this video and i went through them earlier before but they just have a ton of different uh classes and courses you can just take at your own pace and learn a lot about financial modeling financial statement modeling dcf modeling m a modeling trading comps transaction comps lbo modeling like everything you need to know for banking and um, there's also this accounting course that i recommend if you don't uh what should i call it don't have like an accounting background um be sure to use my code rare liquid to get 20 percent off by the way unless you want to just pay full price for whatever reason uh okay so that's kind of my you know that is my netflix dcf i hope this was interesting slash helpful to all of you guys and um i do also wanted to give like a quick note that i will be having uh, i am making a like how to get into banking course that's not modeling related or not what like um what wall street prep covers because they're like you know modeling and all that stuff my course is going to be more of like how to get to know the industry better or what what you should know about the industry what recruiting is like networking tips resume cover letter tips that kind of stuff some behaviorals and like how to prepare for interviews i have a course that i'm building that i'm going to release in the next few months pretty excited because it's going to be a course i wish that i had as well when i was recruiting for banking and so um there's a link down in my description to uh if you want to sign up and you'll you'll get 
um, a lot of a huge discount if you sign up early. So uh, that is it for that. I see a few questions here. For eyebreaker training course ranking, corporate finance institution, Institute of Financial Edge, Wall Street Prep. I don't know much about CFI. Uh, Financial Edge and Wall Street Prep, I think, are both great courses. I worked with both in the past. And I chose to I chose Wall Street Prep because when I looked at their course, I liked how for their financial modeling course, you go it has you go directly into financial statements and pull line items. And I really liked that. And so that's why I decided to work with Wall Street Prep. Um, you know, with that said, Financial Edge is still a great company. If you, I would recommend just, you know, looking at both, looking at Reddit for each and looking at reviews, kind of seeing like what fits your style a little bit better. And um, yeah, go go with whatever works for you. All right, so that concludes the video and the DCF. I hope you all found this helpful. Um, as a friendly reminder, I am uh, this available, this file will be available to Patreon members. And it will be available to the cheaper tiers starting early next month. So the rest of the, this month, no. But then starting next month, um, it'll be part of the Gigabyte tier. But with that said, thank you guys all for watching and sticking around for, let's see, two hours. And catch you all in the next video, hopefully. Peace.